Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our reading of the 29th juz of the Quran. Uh, literally this juz, then juz 30, and subhanallah, we're completely done for this month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our acts of worship in this incredible month and allow us to see it once again with open hearts and better preparation, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, so we start with Surah Al-Mulk. Uh, so these are now surahs that a lot of people will recognize. Um, there's other surahs that over the sessions, maybe Surah Kahf, Surah Yasin, and others. But now we're coming to surahs that are consistently surahs that people recite either every single night or there's some sort of, uh, just they have more of a, an experience with them. And Surah Mulk, the surah of dominion and power and really just emphasizing the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it starts with this idea of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being glorified uh, because in his hands is dominion and he is all powerful over all things. And then a reminder to the human being that life and death literally just exist in order to be a form of test for us. In, for us, That's how we need to see death and life in all of their experiences. Uh, whether we see people die, our own lives, our own deaths, our own tribulations, misfortunes, all of our moments of our existence are just to see whether we are ahsan amala, which of us has the best of actions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately is the invincible, the forgiving. And then there's this incredible passage that just talks about the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nature of the heavens and, and the way they've been put in layers, um, that there's no discrepancy in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter how many times you look, there's no there's no break. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking you, look, look again, look again. And every time you look, you come back and you'll be exhausted by the looking, but you won't be, you'll come with nothing in terms of trying to find any uh, discrepancy and contradiction in the Quran, uh, in the in the heavens. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the heavens being or, or, or adorned, uh, that they also meteors to protect the the revelation in the heavens from the shayateen. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the fire of hell. Uh, and the person thrown in and the screams and, and the noises that they're going to hear from hell itself and the anger that hell feels. And every time people are entered, they're going to be asked, Alam yatikum nadir. This idea of has though, did the warner not come to you? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they say, yeah, he did, but we'd rejected him in his entirety. And if only we had listened. And at that point, they're going to accept all of their deeds and all of their sins and be people of Tawbah, but it's too late to make Tawbah at that point. Um, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks more uh, so that's the notion of the warner that I've put here. The warner being for us the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the many prophets that came before him as well for others. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks now about the earth and how all of these blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed therein. Uh, and then he talks about the sky again. Um, that you feel like you're safe everywhere that you are, but you don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can catch you anywhere. Um, and so this idea now that there is a warner, if you reject the warner, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all these things that you see as blessings could turn into the curses. They could, they literally, the, the universe could turn against you if you reject the creator of the universe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the birds. He speaks about all of the forces that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, he just speaks about that there's nobody except him and all the disbelievers are in complete delusion at thinking that they're going to get things from anybody else. That there's no risk without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that the person who walks upright with honor being guided is better than the one who comes seeking the dunya on his knees. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about some of the other blessings and ultimately the, the wa'ad is going to come and they, they ask when it's going to come but it will come and the warner is there. So this idea of warning, this idea of the divine power, this idea of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasized much. Um, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finishes with a discussion about water, that if the water itself is to vanish, then where are you going to get water from? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his greatest blessings, he could, if the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever decides to turn the tap off, it's over. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just emphasizing the greatest of all his blessings from which all of the other sort of worldly blessings stem from is water. Water is the core of everything. And water is like revelation, they both descend from the heavens. Then our next surah is Surah Al-Qalam. It starts with the mention of the pen. The pen, there's a lot of ulama that take from this, this idea of the sanctity of the pen. Um, you know, that you should be very careful. The power of the pen, the power of writing, the power of the word. Um, and that you should be very careful with what you what you write and what you read and how you utilize the pen. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after so emphasizing this, the pen and what it writes. And this is the pen that writes in the Kitab Mubin. The pen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the masarif al-aqlam that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also heard on the day of judgment, on, on, on the mi'raj. But there's also now a defense of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's not, he's not insane. And he has this incredible reward. And he is upon, settled upon, he has tamakkun upon this great, magnificent character. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
just to emphasize that because the mushrikeen are making all of these aspersions and they're making claims that he's a hypocrite uh, that he's a magician or that he's insane and all of these things and here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing these are all lies ultimately these are people that are completely misguided inna rabbaka huwa alamu he knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who's misguided and who's guided uh, so don't follow the ones who are beliers these people who are rejectors Okay, they want you to be misguided as well. Don't follow them, even if they make all these oaths and but they're spreading lies and they're spreading corruption and they're spreading slander. They don't give any. They don't give anything in charity. They're people who have overboard and they're sinners by by their intrinsic nature. And so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and they they sort of revel in this idea that we have wealth and we have money and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is, and then they reject all the revelation. So all of these signs of the people of rejection are placed for us. And ultimately, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying they will be tested and there will be no exceptions. And at the end. You know that the, everything that they reject will come to meet them, okay? Um, and so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will. This is this is what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is referring to uh, in these verses. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. There's also this uh, discussion on this story. We won't go into into any detail. Um, this here, Inna balona hum kama balona ashab al jannah idaqsamu la yaslimu naha musbihin. That um, that there's this test given to the people of the garden. Um, who sort of are very, they deprive everybody, they don't give anybody their charity, they're, they're sort of very hoarding people who are incredibly ungrateful, and because of their rejection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys their garden. And the day they come in, they see that everything's gone, and they recognize, inna la dalun, we have been completely misguided, completely deprived, and um, ultimately, there are narrations that indicate that they make a tawbah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is, if you make the tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asa rabbuna yubaddilana khayran minha inna ila rabbina inna ila rabbina raghibun. That maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us better than that which we lost because of our rejection. Because if you make a tawbah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always give. And, and what's being emphasized here is that the Ahlul Mecca need to take heed of this. That they have all of these blessings. That maybe they deprive people, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes their blessings away. But if they come back to Allah, then He will give them better than that which they lost. Okay? And so then, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the Jannah, the garden. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, Inna lil muttaqina inda rabbihim jannat al naim. Those with God consciousness will have gardens of bliss. The Muslim is not like the sinner. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, talks again, speaking again about uh, the mushrikeen and about their uh, their idols that they worship, and ultimately yoma yukshaf an sabtu wa idawna ila sujudi falai istatiyun. The shin of Allah subhanahu wa taala, the severity of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa taala, metaphorically you call the shin, will be all unveiled on that day, and their heads will be bowed, and they and they will be in a state of complete and utter humiliation. But at that point, it's um, but the the, 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 the sajda is not then. The sajda to do is now to submit to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala now, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala speaks about this concept we've spoken about before, istidraj. That Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala sometimes just extends people in His blessings in order to punish them. At the end, we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for safety from that. Um, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala just finishes this surah off. Um, you know, the, the rejection, he talks about the Qur'an and the rejection of the dhikr that the people have and the looks that they make and the way they look at each other. When the Qur'an comes down, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that they have to recognize that this is nothing except just a reminder, a source of great guidance for all of humanity and all of the universe. Okay, then Surah Al-Haqa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Surah Al-Haqa is talking about the inevitability of the Day of Judgment. And the Day of Judgment will definitely happen. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very quickly goes into the stories of those people who rejected the Day of Judgment. The, the Thamud and the Ad who are caught by this knocking, the, the, the knocking of the punishment when it comes, uh, and then the wind that comes to destroy them, and all of the different punishments that they had it, it come upon them. And there's a focus really here on, on the people of Ad. Um, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after that speaks about the people of Fir'aun, and that they rejected the Prophet and they were caught with the punishment as well. Um, and all of this was done so that they could take heed. Um, and they didn't take heed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all of these punishments because of the rejection of the message and the blessings, ultimately the trumpet will be blown. And everything will now have to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and that's the day of the waqia. That's the day with the day of judgment. Everything will now start to happen. Uh, the skies will rip open. All of the angels will be there. They'll be carrying the throne on that day. Um, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes it from this very incredible vibrant scene of what's going to happen on the day of judgment, the precursor to the judgment itself. Then the judgment begins and the first thing is that the book, the book will be given. This is a story, this is, the surah is very much just the day of judgment. 
there will be a man who will be given his book in his right hand and he will be in a state of immense joy. Come everybody, look at my book. I, I'm so happy. He's going to be in bliss, in gardens. Everything that he wishes for is going to be there. He's going to eat and drink and just relish the, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you have the other man who receives his book in his left hand. He says, if only I didn't get the book. If only I didn't know what it was. You know, this. If only none of this had happened. Everything that I worked for, my wealth and my authority on the land, all of this is just absolutely no use. And then he'll be locked and taken to the fire. And there he will just have to stay be stay within. Because he never believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he never gave food to the poor. And now there's no protection from him. And there's nothing for him except he's just going to have to eat and drink that which the people of Jahannam have to eat and drink. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finished this surah with this incredible crescendo of revelation. That this is all just the qawl uh, of, of the noble prophet. Either the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or Sayyidina Jibreel. This is not poetry. They say Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu once uh, at the Kaaba Sharifa, he was there. He heard the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reciting these verses. These were the things. These were the verses that placed iman in his heart. That this this is not the word of a poet. This is not the word of a soothsayer. This is just revelation. This all this stuff that they're claiming that it's all made up. This is all lies. At the end of the day, this is all given. Inna hu latadkiratul muttaqin. It's all a reminder. Um, and at the end, Allah subhanahu wa taala is just saying that just. Don't don't let it be a source of great regret. Accept the revelation. Accept the glory of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The next surah is Surah Al Ma'arij. Ma'arij in this instance means the stairways to the heaven. Okay, and some say it's actually the heavens themselves. But the surah starts with this. Um, this person who asks about the punishment, and ultimately Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is saying there's no escape from the punishment. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ma'arij He's the one who allows everybody to ascend He's the cause of a great ascension And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Talks about the day, uh, the day of judgment And ultimately that the skies and the heavens And everything will be completely devastated on that day And nobody will care about anybody else And everybody will just want salvation And they'll be willing to give everything up They'll be willing to give up their children And their wives and their families And everything they have In order to be saved But there is no safety It's just lava, the, the, the punishment um, they, they, everybody will be gathered, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says the man is created in the state of anxiety. He, he just in a state of shock when he's touched by affliction, and then when he's given the blessings, he doesn't want to share them with anybody. He's this incredibly selfish person. The selfishness of the human being is emphasized here, except for those that pray. Those who are, this is how you save yourself. You have to be a person of prayer, not like the hypocrites. Da imun ala salah. Always consistently praying, giving charity to the one who's deserving of it because he has haq ma'loom. He has a deserving right for the, for the one who asks and the one who is deprived. Um, and the ones who affirm the day of judgment. And the ones who are constantly turning away or trying to save themselves from the punishment of hell. Or the punishment of their Lord. The protector, um, to protect, and the, nobody saved. Nobody can guarantee their own safety. They have to protect your uh, chastity and then use it only for your wives and those people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you permission to do this. Maintain your oaths, uh, maintain all of the trust that you have, protect the prayer again. Second time mentioned, they will be mukramun in the garden of paradise. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then talks about the disbelievers who come mocking, attempting to mock the messenger of God sallallahu alayhi wa Do they think that they will enter the garden? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we will do everything, that we, will have, we have the power to bring them back, to do everything. Um, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, leave them to do all of their stuff. To all the mocking and all that they want to do They will meet us on a day that has been promised They will come flying out of their graves um, ila Running to this preordained um, target or place it's Like uh, they're, they're just charging towards this place um, In humility in, in, Not humility, humiliation Complete and utter humiliation This is the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised Okay, then our next surah Surah An-Nuh Surah Nuh, sorry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here speaks about Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. It starts with him that in our son Nuh, we sent Nuh to warn his people before an uh, immense punishment came to them, a painful punishment. He told them, I'm just a warner. Just worship Allah and be conscious of him. Obey me. I'm the prophet because I'm the prophet. You have to obey me. And then they promised all of these incredible things and they reject everything. He said, I called them night and day. And all my calling did is just drove them away further, further. They put their fingers in their ears. They covered themselves with their clothes. They just completely adamant that they're not going to accept i call them out loud i call them in secret i do everything i can i say ask seek forgiveness of your lord he will give you so much wealth the skies will just rain down wealth and money and children and all of these things will be given to you 
Why won't you do all this? Can you not see the creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created? Have you not seen how he has blessed you with the earth and all of this incredible blessings that you have and you're able to travel on these things and the paths you have and the moon and the stars and the skies and the sun and all of these things, how he created you as well. And ultimately, they don't accept anything. Um, they say that we will never leave. وَقَالُوا لَا تَذَرُنَّ آلِهَتَكُمْ وَلَا تَذَرُنَّ وَدًّا وَلَا سُعَاءً وَلَا يَغُوثَ وَيَعُوقَ وَنَصْرًا There's no leaving of these gods for them. You know, this wad and su'a and yaguth and ya'uq and nasr. These are the names of the idols that they used to worship. وَقَدْ أَضَلُّوا كَثِيرًا They are completely misguided. And their dhulm will not increase except in further misguidance. Um, and ultimately, they're just going to be destroyed and entered into the fire. And at this point, Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam makes this dua, the iqbal in, in, um, he brings this la tadar, the dua of wrath, the dua of anger. Don't leave upon the earth even a single one of them still standing, still still abiding on this earth. Destroy every single one of them. And ultimately that's what happened. And the final dua is that forgive me and my parents and those that enter the house, my house, as believers, the believers and the believing men and the believing women. And ultimately, all of the disbelievers have done increase themselves in destruction. Next surah, Surah Al-Jinn. Okay, now there's like all of these urban legends about Surah Jinn. But if you read Surah Jinn and you read it, I don't know, backwards, or if you read it and you draw a circle, then, um, yeah, all of, yeah, all of these crazy things will happen. We're just going to have a look at it very briefly. It's a, it's a, at this point now, the surahs are becoming quite short. So it's just a, a few pages. Uh, surah Jinn. It's about the jinn who listened to the Qur'an, who were completely in awe of it. We've read something of them before they came up. I can't remember which surah it is at this point. Uh, but their discussion has already come up. Um, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the fact um, that they accept Islam. And they accept Allah as their, as their Lord. And also because they had seen... Um, the, the heavens had shifted, you know, the, all of these meteors and things that had come to now dissuade them from their previous demonic exploits. They also reminded them that something had changed now and they realized that, um, that they had to be very, very careful. And there are people who were using them, these men who were using them in order to gain information and to use things and to do whatever else that they were doing. So when they saw, they see that suddenly the sky is not as it used to be. Um, so they have no, Escape, they realize that maybe there is something better for them. Uh, they just all of this recognition that they heard guidance, they believed in it, um, and that they just all of these this information that we have, um, and they, they recognize that the people who are of evil because the jinns are like the human beings, they have good among them, they have evil among them, they have Hindu, Sikhs, Buddhists, atheists. I don't know, I don't, I don't I'm not an, like an expert. You have to ask the, 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 the people of Ruqya. Uh, but ultimately, these are people, some of them are guided, some of them are not guided. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this incredible verse that we all need to take heed of. Ultimately, the masjids belong to God and they don't belong to anybody else. Um, and then there's this dua that's put right at the end, um, this section. Uh, um, this is just a, a complete and utter dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has encompassed the knowledge and the power of all things. Okay, next. Surah Muzammil. Surah Muzammil is an early Makki surah. This is a surah in early revelation where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in complete and utter He's just completely overawed by the fact that he has received this revelation and it's really shaken him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so we say that Khadija Tul Kubra alayhi salam places the 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 um uh, the cloak over him and this is the the, the, the surah in which he is described as and this and the next surah both describe him as being covered in the cloak. And so the Prophet ﷺ is now given guidance. The guidance is Oh the one who's wrapped up, stand for the prayer at night. Because that's the solution to all of our problems. If we just stood and praised Allah. And all of this surah is just telling the Prophet ﷺ, leave all of these other people. These rejectors and all of them, their punishment is coming. Their adab is coming. There's a, there's a day when the earth is going to shake and the mountains and all of these things. And the mountains are just going to become completely disintegrated. We've sent the Prophet. You have to accept the Prophet. Look at Pharaoh. He didn't accept the Prophet. Look what happened to him. 
Um, how can you reject all of these things? How, how are you going to be saved on a day if you reject the day of judgment in which people, young men will have their hairs turn white? The skies will be split open. This is all going to happen. This is just a reminder. Who's going to take the path? Whoever Allah wishes, he'll, he'll give the path to, to him, back to them. And so there's these ideas, really, it's just very early. You can see the message is just being built up now. This is an early Makki surah. And so what will become a more elaborate message later on, which is still the same themes, sort of laid out in its most simple form in this surah, which is quite incredible if you think about it. Um, so the Prophet ﷺ is told to pray, is told to, and given guidance, and also this idea that the mushrikeen are told that there were people who were rejected before you and they were destroyed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives more guidance to the Prophet ﷺ about what to do in the prayer, uh, to call on him, to recite from the Qur'an, to establish the prayer, to give charity. Uh, and everything you give, um, present forward from goodness, you will find it better with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek forgiveness from Allah, He is the forgiving, the merciful. Okay, next, Surah Mudathir starts off with a sort of similar theme. Uh, but it says, Ya Yul Mudathir, now it's more, not high, not, not cover yourself up in seclusion and pray. It's now come out and warn the people. Glorify your Lord. Um, and start the, start the, start the, start the, start the mission. The mission has to begin. Okay. There's going to be a tough day for the disbelievers, the day of judgment. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with this, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has to make the message apparent. Dharni wa man khalaqtu wahida. Leave me with the one I created alone. I gave him all of this wealth. I gave him all of this. And ultimately, he just became kalla innahu li ayatina anida. This is talking about Walid ibn Mughira, the father of Sayyidina Khalid ibn Walid radiallahu anhu. He pondered, he pondered, he pondered. All of this great pondering he did, ultimately he rejected everything. And now look, he said, this is all magic. This is just the words of the human being. So he will be placed in the blazing flames. What? There's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing that remains. Everything will be completely demolished and destroyed by the fire when it, when it, when it finally gets there. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the guardians of hellfire. Uh, they're, they're going to be there, they're angels, and they're going to, it's going to be a very tremendous affair. Um, okay. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides who he wants, who he doesn't want to guide. And then at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes these promises by the, the, the moon and the, and the night and the, and the morning, um, about the enormity of the fire of hell. And that every soul will taste what it has to taste on that day. Apart from the people of the right hand, who are in the garden of paradise, asking about the sinners. They're saying, Ma fi saqar, What brought you to the fire? We weren't people who prayed. We didn't give charity. We used to just talk and say bad things about Allah and His Prophet. We rejected the day of judgment. It all came. Now nobody can save us. And they try to run away and there's nothing you can do to run away. So you have to... Don't, don't be people who don't fear the Akhirah, be people who take the guidance, who accept the guidance, and who are reminded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the people of God consciousness and the people of Allah's forgiveness. Then we have now, we're coming to a close, Surah Al-Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this surah, it's all about Qiyamah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says an oath by the day of judgment, by the, the, the lamenting soul. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we'll bring it all back. We have this power of resurrection. We're going to bring it all back to the extent of your fingerprints. Everybody has unique fingerprints. You'll be brought back to the minute detail. They ask, when is the day of judgment? Oh, when the eyes are grabbed and uh, the, the, the moon has this khusuf, this like, they use khusuf to mean eclipse, but it's like sort of the light is going to be taken from it. And the night and the, and the sun and the moon are completely gathered and there's like this combustion or it's just everything is in a complete disarray and destruction on that day of judgment. There's no escape. Where are you going to go? You can only go to your Lord. And that day he'll tell you everything that you did. And at that point, the man, man already knows about himself and he'll present, even if he presents excuses, he knows his reality. He knows already what his fate's going to be on that day. And there's a segue. There's a slight more where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to the Prophet وسلم, don't recite too fast and then it comes back you want haste you and you reject the day of judgment the day when faces will be lit up looking to their Lord the days where faces will be downcast completely um, just completely given in to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his punishment that um, the way the souls will reach the throats and all of this is just talking about the inevitability of death. When all of this happens, on that day you will just have to return to your Lord. And what state? You didn't pray, you didn't give charity, you rejected everything. You were an arrogant person, you walked and, and you did all of these things. You thought that you had no, nobody was going to take you to task. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look, we had you from the beginning. We were controlling you from the beginning. We've been watching over you from the beginning. Do you not think that we'll be able to bring back the dead to life the way we brought everything into existence from the beginning? Okay, next surah. Surah Dahar, okay. Um, 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the human being and about time. And both of these themes, but that's why the surah has two names, Dahar and Insan. And this idea that the human being was once nothing, nothing to be mentioned. His only existence was in the knowledge of Allah, Jalla fil Ula. Now he has existence. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about he's the one who created all of this, uh, the beginningness of human beings. And that he prepared all of these punishments and gardens and everything for them. Um, and then he gave all of them وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about people who do give charity, who people who are of goodness. They only give إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءٌ وَلَا شُكُورًا They give only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't want anything else. They fear the day of judgment, the day of abus, the day of the faces, where all the faces and everything will be in complete um, humbleness in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the worry that they have and they'll be given all the reward for their goodness and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, the garden of paradise and all of the good rewards that these people will have and all of the people that will be bringing them all of these beautiful trinkets and vessels what they're going to be drinking on that day the rivers everything uh, they're going to see all of these blessings they're going to wear these incredible clothes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give them all of this and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finishes this a lot of discussion of Jannah then he finishes it with the discussion of the Quran that this is Quran and so you have to accept that this is the revelation of Allah and remember Allah and make sajda to Allah and make tasbih to Allah and just know that Allah and don't be people who, who just want this what is in the dunya this hasty life of the dunya and they ignore the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying it's just a reminder and you don't want except if Allah wants. And Allah is knowing the wise. And He enters who He wants in His mercy. Allah, we ask you to enter us into your mercy. And He, the oppressors are given this painful punishment. We ask for safety from that punishment. On these days, I know it's the 29th now, so we're near the end. But the ulama said, when you recite the verses of punishment, you seek safety from the punishment. When you recite the verses of reward, you seek the reward. You seek Jannah. Finally, our final surah. Starts with these oaths about winds, about the different forms of winds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends. And then he talks about, in, inevitably this surah will move now to the day of judgment. And it will see as it goes, إِنَّمَا تُوَعَدُونَ لَوَاقِعَ That which you have been promised will definitely happen, will definitely take place. And all of the, the, the trappings of the day of judgment are presented. It's the يَوْمُ الْفَصْلِ It's the day of separation. Do you know? وَيْلٌ يَوْمَ إِذِلِ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ This, this surah, ayah will come up ten times in this surah. surah. It's like Surah Rahman. It's just a crescendo. It gets louder and louder. That's how you need to think it. The emotion is rising with every single instance of mentioning of this verse. Look at all these things we did. The, the destruction of the early people. And this is how we do with the evil Jews. Look at the way you were created. And Allah fashioned and He did everything. Look at how He made the earth. And the mountains and all of this water and all of the blessings He gave. You rejected all of these things, you're going to have to face them now. And all of the punishments that come and nothing can avail you uh, on that day. Um, there's no speech on that day. Now you're silent because now the body speaks. Everything else speaks but you. You're all gathered. It's the day of separation. The first and the last, everybody's going to be gathered. The, the believers are going to have these incredible rewards on that day. Eat and drink as you please. Um for all of that which you did, in reward for all of that you did, وَيْلُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ قُلُوا وَتَمَتَّعُوا قَلِيلًا إِنَّكُمْ مُجْرِمُ And the disbelievers are told in the dunya, you can benefit slightly from whatever this is you have, this this paltry, small temporal happiness, but ultimately you're going to enter the fire of hell. إِنَّكُمْ مُجْرِمُ You are sinners. وَيْلُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ When they were asked to make record, they didn't make record. وَيْلُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ what speech will you believe after him? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that brings us to an end, to the end of just 29. Um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for salam and afiyah and tawfiq. Um, just to, subhanallah, I've mentioned this, yes. It's just a, an indication of the overlying and overarching power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that even the fingertip, he has the power to bring it back. Um, to the nth degree Allah has the power to bring us Which also shows how much he knows of us How well he knows us He's so close to us Every thought that we have Every idea that enters our heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more aware of it Than we are ourselves And what are the subconscious movements And, and foundations that bring forth Everything that manifests from us Allah knows and so with that knowledge, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to engulf us in his mercy and his blessings and to make us people who think nothing of, to think of nothing but him, to think of nothing but his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdikun ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiru wa natubu ilayka.